and we're just about to go and see the tomb of St. Peter. And we can't believe it. Well, it's massive. But every... What we're looking at here, basically, is a building which outdid all the buildings that have ever come before it in the, in the world. Not only an incredible structure, but a feat of engineering beyond all previous works. When you think this building is almost 500 years old and took over 130 years to build, it almost bankrupted the church. The amount of indulgences they sold to enable them to build this throughout Europe with the sale of these indulgences ultimately caused, of course, the nailing of the Edith of Worms onto that cathedral door and the division of the church ensued, the Reformation. So in a way, it's an emblem of the division caused by the construction of such an ambitious and astounding place. I'm just doing this video because I want you to notice how small the people are walking on the floor of St. Peter's. There's a little group there. Like ants. It's a bit of a horrible rainy day, but um, now this is the facade of St. Peter's from the back. Here they all are. There's Christ. This is the keys of St. Peter's. This is Rome. I can't resist saying this. So, Okay, look at that immense height and the grandeur of all this. The baths of Caracalla were probably almost on this scale. And the basilica is often based on the design of these spectacular Roman bathhouses. So everything here is, is immense. And here I am with a little kind of holy water stoop, but we've got giant putty. We're looking at Bernini's great Baldacchino, which is uh, one of his famous barley sugar columns. And uh, a lot of bronze went into the making of this, and it's said to be the largest bronze monument in the world. And underneath the Baldacchino, there's this sort of 16th century extravaganza of a pair of stairs going down to St. Peter's. And in medieval times, of course, this, this stuff hadn't been built. Pilgrims would go down there and venerate the founder of the church. We're looking at a, a monument here which uh, is in the shape of a, a bronze throne. Uh, it's actually um, a sort of a reliquary because contained within this bronze uh, seat is the supposed wooden throne of St. Peter's. But what's remarkable about this is, is one of Bernini's great masterpieces. It is just so theatrical. I mean, it is kind of cinematography in, in bronze, glass and stone. Just look at those gold clouds falling through the back of the chairs and lifting the whole composition, making it very, very light and airy, even though it's built with such dark bronze and the light coming from the stained glass window the holy ghost hovering above there just pure utter kind of baroque excess but but um, done with the most incredible flair and, and and genius by this young bernini
You used to be able to go very close to it, but you know, this madman took a hammer to it about 30 years ago, so it's now hidden behind this uh, bulletproof glass. You carved out of one solid piece of Carrara marble. And you know, we have a young virgin, a very young Virgin Mary, who basically is a kind of a Greek goddess, really, let's face it and holding the dead son, one of the most direct connections with this piece of work to the work of the ancient painters of Greek vases in the 6th century Athens is the so-called dead arm, the braccio morto of Christ, which has forever been a symbol of death, that fallen arm that uh, implies the complete lack of life in the inner body. The most moving, moving piece of work that anyone ever. And was it created? Was it created for this place? It was always, yes, it's always been here, as far as I know. So it was a he actually yes, carved it yeah. for this. And. Um, the thing about it is that uh, Michelangelo was astounded himself by how, uh, what he had created. And I think on the, if you look between the breasts of the Virgin, there's a kind of a, a sort of a, a river running through there. I think he actually mm, put his name on it, he signed it, you know, Michelangelo Patriot. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so.